I'm Bertrand Berruard and you're watching for bestplayersonly.com. Hi everyone, John Liebman here. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. Coming to you today from the Warwick and Framus World Headquarters, Mark Neukirchen, Germany, with our good friend Bertrand Berroir. Bonjour, Bertrand. Hello, John. Uh, for uh, starting, congratulations for the pronunciation of my name, which is not easy to foreign people. I'm glad to meet you. Well, thank you. I'm glad to know you as well. I found out about you from Hans-Peter Wilfer, who is the owner and founder of Warwick. One day he sent me an email with a YouTube link, and he said, you need to know this guy. And I watched, and I was very intrigued, and I want to find out about you, and I'd like to hear your story. You're from France, which is just right up the road from where we are now. Tell me about how you became a bass player. At first, I, I really w wanted to play soccer, okay. you know, and I I, I, I tried to be... To what do you call that, football in Europe? Yes, but I, you understood better soccer, right? Yes. Yeah, I, I, and uh, I tried to become a professional player. Really? But at this time, I was like too, too small, to not athletic enough to become a soccer player. So I just quit uh, soccer at, at this time, and started playing bass because I met <coughs> a drummer with who I started music and the first tune which decided me to play bass was a tune from Robert Trujillo yes. uh, from Infec Infectious Grooves. Yes, Maybe. I interviewed Robert two years ago right here and he was sitting in that very yeah. chair as a matter of yeah. fact. Yeah. <laughs> how, yeah. how old were you when you started playing bass? I started at uh, 15. Okay, Yeah, that's when I started. Really? Yes. Oh, cool. Yes. So it's a good, good age to start because you, the motivation is is high, and you choose you choose it by yourself. It's not your parents that tell you start music or blah blah blah. Yeah. So, so my first uh, uh, motivation was Robert Trujillo. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a very good Spanish uh, speaker. Neither am I. <laughs> And after that, I, I switched to Flea from Red Hot Chili Peppers, yeah. uh, Stuart Zender from uh, Jamie Rockway. I'm going to uh, interview Stuart in about an hour yeah. today. Oh, he's coming today? Yes. In that very chair. Wow. <laughs> it, you know, it's, so it's quite cool. a chair. So cool. It's a nice chair. <laughs> and af after that, I discovered uh, more jazzy things like, of course, Jaco Pastorius, Marcus Miller which are for me a kind of bridges between uh, rock stuff, funk stuff, and real jazz stuff. They are between, you know? Yeah. So it's good to start with Marcus or Jaco to uh, listen to Miles Davis, Ron Carter, uh, after that. It was my, my bridge between yes. the, these two worlds. Do you, do you play upright bass yes. as well? Yes, I, I play upright. So, so my former influences were like slapping, uh, tapping and these kind of things. I liked uh, at this time also Stuart Ham. I was a great fan. So Stuart Ham? Stuart Ham, yeah. Yes. And I, m I meet him today too. Yes. So everybody is here, so that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> and after that, I quit a little bit slap and started studying upright bass and harmony. <laughs> yeah. Because at first I was playing, you know, w only with a visual uh, uh, things, yeah. you know. Yes. I didn't know the the the, the name of the of the. Yes. Tools. You you knew what to do, but you didn't know what you were doing. If that yeah, makes sense, you didn't know why. You didn't know what was behind yeah. it, what was underneath. That's it. Yeah. yeah. By ear. Yes. Yeah. And then I switched to to upright bass. After that, I had a lot of experiences with upright bass and into jazz area. Uh, for Did example. you ever play with the bow? Yeah, 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 of course. French bow, I bet, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. the, uh, like this. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I like the German bow, but. Yeah, I, I never tried, so I think. When I, I when I pick up a French bow, I hold it like a German bow. <laughs> really? Yeah. Do, do you also play upright? Oh yeah. You play both. Oh yeah. Cool. And five string and fretless and slapping and tapping and all that Everything. stuff. Yeah, yeah. So what is keeping you busy these days? What are you doing now? I'm working on um, the video that you could see. Yes. Is um, 
a part of my own project, which is called BEPS. Yes. And this project is a Afro jazz uh, project mixing people, uh, as you could see, a drummer from Cameroon, Brice Wasi, a percussionist from Venezuela, which is called Orlando Poleo, which is a, a great percussionist too, and two saxophone players, th which were f some of the young lions from the jazz scene in Paris, you know. And we tried to do uh, a band without harmonical instruments. Yeah. I am, I should be in this case. You mean no guitar, no, no piano? Guitar. Of course, okay. that's it. Jerry Mulligan, Jerry Mulligan did that with Chet Baker back yes, in the yes, 50s. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. With the two melodic lines yeah. uh, above. Uh, uh, yeah, this kind of, of thing. So uh, in this way, I, I can use chords, harmonics, many other um, modes, playing modes dif different. And which allow me to explore the instrument more and more. Let's talk about the instrument itself. We are here in Warwick. Uh, tell me about why you like to play Warwick basses. Which model do you play? You play the... The Corvette. Ah, the Corvette, right. So Five strings, yeah. yeah. Well, um, just before this bass, I, I used to play uh, Le Duc bass. Maybe you know this brand, which... It sounds French. <laughs> oh, <laughs> You're so smart. <laughs> it is. It's Le Duc is a French luthier. Um, he, but he, he got kind of uh, international uh, acclaim. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. This, this kind of bass sounds really half acoustic, yeah. which is good for um, jazz fusion stuff, but not good enough for slapping or, and it doesn't de develop big basses, right? So I played this bass 10 years long. I had a contract with uh, Le Duc too, and I was uh, at one point I was fed up with with this instrument, and I needed a bigger sound just to to go back to slap, tapping, fat sound, and this kind of thing. So I really needed to to change my bass, and at this time I, I, I got the contact with Hans Peter, and. It worked. I we talked about my work and my career, and he was interested in uh, using my, uh, my in giving me a Warwick bass. So it was two years ago, and since when I don't touch my Ludwig bass anymore. <laughs> okay, tell me specifically what you like about the Warwick bass. Mm. I liked um, sustain is enormous. I liked that the fact that I, I can use the, the B string easily. The, the, the B string is quite precise. I think it's not always the case. Sometimes when you play on the B string, it's like you, you cannot, it's like sound, but not really notes, you know? Yeah. So I can f find this on the Corvette. And also I liked, uh, it's m way more heavy than my Leduc. So as you, as you can see, I'm not very heavy people, right? So this space gives me more balance. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm more into the ground. I, I don't know if you get it. You know what I mean? Yes. So it's good for tempo, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm kind of people that go to the to the, to the sky, yeah. and it brings me to earth. So I like. What kind of strings do you play? Uh, I don't have really one favorite. Yeah. String uh, brand, I use, I change all the time, trying to find the. Okay. By the way, as I get the uh, Corvette, the, it was equipped with uh, Warwick strings, yeah. and like I like them too. Good, good. How about amplifiers? Mark bass. Mark bass. Yeah. From Italy. Yeah, yeah, and okay. it's so. Uh, the weight is very cool. Huh? So I w when I have to go to a gig with. Uh, upright bass plus an amplifier. Yeah. I really appreciate the mini marks. Yeah, oh yeah, space. those are great. How about effects? Are you very much into effects? Yes, 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 yes. I like effects too. I like delay. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can see another composition which I uh, I did in the same uh, series than the other. I using a delay and um, a ballad. What what kind of equipment? What what companies, manufacturers? Which delays and effects do you use? This one is a Ibanez delay. Ah, okay. Uh, 
like this i don't remember the exactly uh, the reference of it yeah. but it's 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 not uh, it's a bit old you know there are two yeah. uh, two buttons to, to to change and also you can uh, detune the the sound on it so <laughs> this kind of things very uh, interesting yeah. <laughs> that's fun how about the future, Bertrand? Because you're, you're young and you have a lot of energy. I think you have a very bright future and a good career ahead of you. What else would you like to do that you haven't done yet? I mean, I really want to tour with my band. I, this past year, I, I, I did a lot of tours with uh, <coughs> the music from the other. But now I really want to tour with my music. Okay. That's my aim now. Have you been over to the States yet? Once in Seattle, yeah. Okay. Did, yeah. Did, to, to perform or to visit? or what? Yeah, yeah, to perform, yeah. Okay. With a, <coughs> a violin player uh, called... Um, the team was, was with a very good friend of mine, which is called Cédric Orio. He's a pianist who released an album... Uh, with uh, Terry Lynn Carrington and John Paliducci uh, oh. like uh, five years ago. And after that, we, we did a small tour with uh, Terry, Lynn, Terry Lynn Carrington yes. in France. It was in uh, 2011. And uh, we also did a lot of other tours, uh, especially with uh, this uh, violin player, which is called Ben Powell. Maybe you heard about him, I don't know. It's, uh, all this is mostly in jazz area. Yeah. And we did m many, many tours in South America, uh, North America, Asia, Indonesia, Africa. Uh, we tour a lot. And now, beside my project, I, I got like 15 bands right oh. now. So I'm just a, a bass player. <laughs> so you've got a lot going on. Yes. Yeah, Terry Lynn is great. I've seen her perform a long time ago. She and John Patitucci did some stuff together. They did a, a Coltrane tune on one of John's albums with Michael Brecker, just Michael and John and Terry Lynn. It was, yeah, it was, yeah, it was wonderful. Also with no piano or guitar, uh, if I, I remember I correctly. I don't know this, this record, I should, I should listen to it. Well, I'll uh, turn you on to it as soon as we're done here. <laughs> Bernard Ber Ber Bertrand Berroir. Yes. It's a pleasure getting to know you and uh, much luck, continued success. Like I said, I think you have a, a very bright career ahead of you and we will all look forward to seeing and hearing lots more of you in the future. Much luck, continued success to you in every regard. Thank you so much. With, I'm gonna say it one more time, Bertrand Berroir. Yes? Yes, yes. I am John Liebman from the Warwick and Framus World Headquarters in Markneikirchen, Germany. Boy, this is hard to say, all this stuff. <laughs> You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. <laughs>